Hey, what's up? We are live. Let me check the audio real fast. Make sure you can hear me well. It's going to be a fun one. I'm going to do a real fun live stream for me personally, because this is something I've never done before. Uh, we're going to learn how to crop photos. So that's exciting. Um, I think today is going to be really just the pure skill set of cropping a photo. Um, we're going to go over some principles that guide me. A lot of this is intuitive. A lot of this is subjective. A lot of these, this is things that you learn with time, what you personally like, what you personally enjoy. Uh, and so I'll do my best uh, to contextualize things properly. So with that, let me know where you're from. How is it going? What have you been up to? And then we'll go through it. I think what we'll do is do a couple of questions. Hey, Tias, how are you doing from Indonesia? Uh, thank you so, so much for being here. I'm going to take... Um, look at a bunch of your messages, then we'll do like half the photos, talk a bit, do the other half. I hope that makes sense. Uh, hey, Cirogo, Carl from Connecticut. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, Carl, how are you doing? <laughs> hope everything is well with you. Um, I hope everyone's excited. Let me do this. Let me show you already uh, my other screen where I'll show you how I crop stuff. I finally figured out how to share the Photoshop screen as a screen and not share my entire screen. Uh, so that's exciting. Hey, y'all. Uh, hey, y'all. You're on from uh, called Melbourne. Pierre, how are you doing? Hey, Paula. Uh, good morning from Yorktown. Perfect timing with this video as I was studying a photo and considering how to crop. Yeah. You know what's exciting to me about this topic? Um, looking back, and I mentioned this in my Instagram story, looking back, a lot of my bad paintings were results of not so good reference photos. Now, I don't want to blame it fully on the photo because at the end of the day, you as an artist have the ability to do whatever you want. But sometimes having the incorrect photo um, can lead to a lot of problems in the execution of the painting uh, just because, you know, it, there's less of a flow going. It's, you enjoy it less. But as soon as you know how to do that, it just makes your life a whole lot easier. And the way I came up with this idea is I didn't came up with it, come up with it myself. Uh, on the Discord, someone shared a reference photo and then I cropped it differently and I recommended they work on it differently. And it turns out this is something a lot of people have trouble with. So why not show you how to crop? And people ask for this topic. Uh, hey, Megan, Haley Run, it's holiday here uh, in Saarland, Germany. And somehow managed to forget to have coffee this morning. So I'm making iced coffee. Oh, cool. I love coffee with ice, just generally. Uh, I have my aloe, aloe vera water thing, juice. It's really such a bizarre drink, but I love it. I used to drink it a lot in the past. Then I had a good healthy streak of a few years of not drinking anything sweet. Gotta stop. <laughs> Paul, how are you doing? Morning. Sebastian, how are you? Hello from French. A uh, guy living in Spain. By the way, I had a notification on and never got anything from YouTube. Don't know about the others, but lucky I remembered. Oh, yeah. Usually you have to go to your... It's via email, right? And then you go to the promotional tab. You know, I check my email usually after the live streams, and I have a notification for it. Uh, so that's funny. Hey, Vita, how are you doing? Hey, Monique. Hey, Lollipop. Uh, so we're going to let a few more people in and then we'll get started. I have about, let's see how many reference photos, 11, I think, or 13. Okay, I have 13 photos. Honestly, I don't really know how long it's going to take to go over these. This could be fast or it could take time. I really don't know. But if I had to guess, I think about five minutes per photo, which puts us at five times, maybe even more, depending on the photo, five times 13. So that's going to be an hour and like 10 minutes max, something like that. And then we can and add the Q&A. It's going to be fine. It's going to I'm starting to get the timing down much better, you know. Uh, uh, hey, Janet, how are you doing from Oklahoma? Uh, Megan says, I've been working on Loomis heads and animal heads lately. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's that's a very useful skill to have. Uh, it kind of forces you to learn a bit of perspective, right? And to cut things correctly. I actually just did a quick anatomy session. And I am so rusty because I haven't been uh, seriously at it for a few months now. Took a bit of a break from drawing really frequently and focused more on watercolor. Uh, but I think soon <laughs> I'm going to go back a bit to it uh, just because I really feel the desire. Hey, Ty and Don. Good morning with a beautiful corgi in the profile pic. That's so cute. Adorable. Uh, Rashid, how are you doing? Hey, Liron. Uh, hey, Chandra 
from Oklahoma too. Cool. Nancy G from Akron, Ohio. Good topic indeed. Lollipop says, I learned that from college. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, I think we can get started. I don't know. I think we're good. We're good. Well, people, we'll let people in. Hopefully, uh, you know, gradually people come into the live stream. Uh, I think by the time we get to the second photo, we'll have uh, a bit more people here. I just want to make sure that people don't miss too much. Okay, so I'm going to use the crop tool, obviously, and you can see my mouse. So that's good. And I'm going to show you, hopefully, my computer functions properly because uh, it's been on a strange little weird behavior uh, recently. Uh, Pierre, I have painted Ruth several times. Uh, I have a few paintings of her. If you dig enough, you'll find them. Um, hey, Diane, how are you doing? Uh, thank you so much for the love and for sharing this live stream. Much appreciated. Hey, John, how are you, my friend? Um, hey, Linda. Uh, Dwayne, how are you doing? And Monique says, drawing is so important. Indeed. So let's get to it. So we have this reference photo, and I'm going to look here off, into, off not directly at you because I have another screen where I do this. Um, and here's the thing. Some photos are perfect the way they are. So to tell you the truth, I would paint this one the exact same way it is. With that said, there are multiple ways of cropping a photo in a way that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so that gives you more options. So one of the things I like to do is sometimes if something looks too complex, I like to cut it and zoom in a bit on fewer details. So I have less to worry about, right? So don't look at it as one correct way to crop, but look at it as principles to guide you. So let's say, let's start with what I don't like doing. Okay. And that's something that's just not good practice. So what I would never do is paint it, say, like this. Because this here, having the edge of the scene overlap with the edge of the of the cliff, that's a little awkward to me, right? Now, you could do this. This is even worse to me. The worst thing I can think of is doing it like that, just straight on the lighthouse. It's very awkward, and it feels like it comes to an abrupt end. Now, if you want to show something a little different, if anything, I'd cut all of this out and maybe focus on that that you know, the cliffs and then the right and left ocean to the sides, right? So this is just one more thing you could do. Here's something I like to guide my edges of the painting, okay? So if you look at this little bump here, this rock, whatever that is, I really dislike when things really, again, intersect with the side of the painting. So I would just do this, okay? Or if I want to include it, I'll go like, that is actually the edge of the photo. Uh, but I would put it, bring it in a little more, right? So if there was something here, imagine that there was more. That's what I would do, okay? Now let's look at cropping as means to changing the composition completely. So right now we're looking at it like that, right? It's, it's a, a landscape orientation. But if we want to go, let's say portrait, we want to look at the depth inwards, top to bottom. You could crop it to be more like this orientation, right? Now, the way I would probably do it is, let me think, because this here in the foreground doesn't play a role. It's separate, it's weird, it's awkward. I would probably either go something like this, maybe, and maybe have that connection here, and then you get this nice little gesture going through all the way through here. So you'd look at something like this, going all the way, leading you from the foreground all the way to the lighthouse, right? If, that is if I want to go with a portrait orientation. This scene is practically made for a um, landscape orientation, but if you want to. Now, one thing I like to do is think in terms of even more extreme landscape or portrait. So I would go like this and ask myself, like, how much can I stretch it to be a panoramic view, okay? So here are a couple of things to have in mind when you do that. One thing I like to avoid is having this edge here leading all the way to the corner. I really dislike that. Okay, so what I would actually do if I want to go this route, I'll make sure not to do this, but keep it either above or to the right of the edge. Can you see that? Now, the horizon line is a big element here, so I would not put it in the center. I'd actually put it off center somewhere, probably keep it about a third. You see that, those lines that Photoshop creates for me? So that's about a third. The lighthouse is also about a third, right? It's almost at the upper kind of top third of the scene. So that's a really uh, decent, common kind of composition, okay? Now you could zoom in more. 
and make it a smaller scale if you want to make things easier on yourself. So in this case, I also like to place things around a third if I can. And then you could make a cool decision to maybe focus more on the sky. So you'd show essentially a bit more of the sky and the lighthouse is going to be, and you see this little green patch to the corner, plays no role to me. I'm cutting it out. So it's going to be something like this. And that's another very interesting composition. Let's squeeze it a little more just so that we can, you know, um, have it more of a normal paper orientation. And if I go like that, look at what happens here. We have this kind of a bump, and then it leads us onto the lighthouse. Everything I'm doing here is, again, not rules that are set in stone, but this does have a bit of an attractive kind of look to it, right? Um, if anything, these two could compete. These two focal points could compete. So you could either in decrease the contrast here on that cliff, or you could, you know, play around with the details and all of them, details, values, and keep it in balance like that. Now, I feel like this is too close to the bottom. So I'd probably do something like this. See that opening here to the corner? And I'd get rid of that green patch. I just wouldn't paint it in. That feels to me like a very solid composition. I'd remove some of the sky. See something like that. That I like. That I like a lot. I like that you get to see the ocean here really close. Uh, you get to see the ripples here. I need to make my brush thinner. What am I doing here? This is thinner. This is nice. I love that kind of a thing. But I would get rid of this. This plays no role. It's separate, completely separate from everything else. So I can make it disappear. Let's use this stamp tool just to give you an idea of how this can improve the... And I know we're talking cropping, but look at how much cleaner it looks, right? To me, that's much better because this just doesn't play a role, okay? So I think that's kind of, you know, looking at it in many different ways. Uh, let's look at another, real quick, another portrait orientation. So let's say I want to get rid of all of this side here, right? All of that... I don't care about the lighthouse. I don't care about anything. So I'd close that detail off away. And you could even treat this as a semi-abstract semi, uh, composition, right? You could just treat this as a bunch of shapes. And let me see if I just turn this black and white. The values, see, there isn't too strong of contrast, but that's something you can play around with. One thing I don't like as much about this is the overlap. So here's one thing to pay attention to. Once again, a very important overlap at the edge here. It, it's almost like, as a viewer, I'm asking myself, why did, did the artist not show this point that I really care about, right? So I'd probably include that, honestly. Then I wouldn't go with that strange of a composition. So if anything, I do something like this. See, now that's a very nice composition. That's actually, if you want to get rid of the lighthouse and not treat, this looks to me very nice. And then look at the lower edge. You get this edge of the cliff, and that works really well. It's still not leading you to the corner, right? So I would either, you know, this is perfect. I'm happy with it. But you could cut more if you want to. And again, I wouldn't leave this little island. I would either cut through it or leave it completely in. This is a great, great way of cutting cutting this reference photo, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, this this shows you kind of my process in mind. I hope that makes sense, right? Uh, let me look at some of your comments and we'll we'll figure it out if, if that if that helps, you know. Uh, thank you so much, Dwayne, for the reminder for people to leave a like. Really, really appreciate it. Sebastian said, I've been doing some photography in the past, so I guess most things will work for cropping. Oh, the YouTube app just notified me, but after the start of the live session. Okay, so you actually get a notification via the app. Okay. Feels too centered. Yeah, so I unfortunately, I don't know what you said, what relates to, because I, it's been a while. So sorry about that. Is there a free version of Photoshop for Mac that you know of? Um, I'm actually using the preview, um, just the basic photo editing for Mac. Preview, I think it's called. Um, you can use uh, Canva, I think it's called, C-A-N-V-A. I think that's an app. Like online, you don't even need to download anything. <clears throat> and you have GIMP. G-I-M-P is free. It's a it's a weird one. You have to get used to it, and some people hate it. I don't like a lot of aspects of it, but it is free, and it has most of the functionalities of Photoshop. It's just not very intuitive. But GIMP is good in terms of functionality. G-I-M-P. Um, 
Yeah, thank you so much. If you can drop a like, I'd really, really appreciate it. Helps the live stream reach more uh, of the people who miss it so far. Uh, Tech to Tank, how are you doing? Thank you for being here. Uh, and thank you so much, Kan Kanaya, for the love from India. So with that, I think we can move uh, on to the next one. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll, I'll try and monitoring the comments as I go along, OK? So let's look at, and by the way, so again, reminder, this was the original. To me, it feels like if I'm going to include this lighthouse, it's so tiny and it's so far in the distance. I like its placement, but it's so far. And notice the, the person taking the photo took it dead in the third, upper third, right? Which I like. I like that this is not on a third, so they don't compete as much. But it's just very small. So if you paint it big, maybe that would work. If you paint it on a small piece of paper, you barely have enough room to get all the details, in which case I'll probably crop it. But if you want to get rid of it, I really like this composition. It's very uh, interesting to me. Was it this composition? No, it wasn't this. What did I do? I had something else that I liked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was like that. OK, yeah. Maybe a bit more to the left. I don't remember. Maybe something like that. That's what I would go with, if anything. Um, let's look at another one. This is an interesting one. So check it out. Sunset. And the thing that, like, what's, what's jumping at you right now? The, the first thing, and it's interesting. It's not necessarily bad. Again, remember, these aren't rules set in stone. And hey, Laura, good morning. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. These rules aren't set in stone. But what you have here, like, what's the thing that really jumps at you? To me, it's the fact that we have two boats are practically at identical placements. So if I look at this distance, it's really similar to this. And that could work. I like that the light is breaking that pattern. But I would probably move one of them. I'd either bring this one closer, the one on the right. Probably would bring this one closer just to break it off a bit. I wonder if I could get away with actually just bringing it closer. If I were to take this, oops, wrong layer. If I were to take this, and and yeah, now we're getting into, yeah, I don't know, and making it bigger, obviously. But I'd probably change something here. Now, if we're talking about cropping, what I'd probably end up doing is getting rid of one of the boats, which is going to be this. Now, the reason I'm getting rid of this is because the contrast there is low, and I want the one with the beautiful high contrast. Now, it doesn't mean, again, nothing's wrong with the reference photo necessarily but i just like to have things a little more interesting in that way now already i think that's better ideally you do make it perfect by adding a boat or changing things around right but let's say you're just talking about cropping um and hank oh i'm sorry to hear it's super cold yeah yep yeah. uh but sometimes it's fun i guess right yep exactly two boats no focal point. Yeah, it, it just it really splits your attention between the two. And my eyes go like ping pong like this, and I don't like that. So anyway, cut one out. Now, one thing that still bugs me is the fact that the horizon line is so close to the center. So I'd probably, and that's where it comes to what do you want to convey? What story do you want to show? Do you want to have the atmosphere of like the sky and have it kind of like this? Or... Do you want to be more focused on the waves and the ripples and everything? Again, totally your choice. I'd probably, I, you see, I'm a big fan of that almost third. I like that. I don't necessarily place things right on the third. Like, for example, if you do this or oopsie doopsie. Or if you do this, like now it's dead on the third. I actually like it a bit off, off third. I don't know why. I like things closer to the edge rather than the center for some reason, right? Uh, so to me, that's a bit of a better composition. Maybe even like that. And I would ideally add more details and even get rid of some of the some of the sky. I, I would actually focus more on the ripples. Now, one thing as you're cutting this is again, pay attention to this mountain ridge in the background. Try and avoid this kind of a thing. It just feels very claustrophobic. I don't know if you're like me, but to me, that area right now feels very claustrophobic. So notice how much it opens up as soon as I do this, right? Just a bit. You don't need much. And it feels much more open and alive, right? I hope that makes sense. Um, 
like the worst thing for me you can do is really keep it like that. You see, like very claustrophobic, closing in on the mountains. That's very awkward to me. It, it awakens in me a sense of discomfort. And maybe that's something you're aiming for, right? That's the thing. Composition is a tool for you to play around with uh, and to to get things the way you want them to the, to have the impression and the feeling you want, right? Uh, Marjorie, upstate New York, uh, uh, here I have a uh, New York State here. I have a nature photographer friend that takes pictures I would love to be able to paint. She's working on taking pictures that need less cropping. Yeah, definitely. When someone takes a picture, they already have all of these in mind. This is why I like taking my own pictures, because I know exactly what crops I like. Uh, tie dye and dawn. I crop almost every photo I take, especially I cringe when I see a photo someone posts with the horizon not level. Yeah, that's a different. That's a different deal, right? If you'd go completely like off level, that's a that's a completely different feel, right? It feels very unstable. But that's an, another idea. Again, if you want to convey instability, uh, Hank, what would a touch of sun right above uh, the mountains like? What would it do? Let me think about it. Um, you could do that, but here's the thing. Here's something I don't like as much. So let's say that I'm going to take this color right here and I'm going to go for a lighter thing like a sun. And we're going to do like a touch, right? Something like that. By the way, you're going to see a video from me about digital tools. That's going to be really fun uh, soon. I can't, I can't disclose a lot because uh, you'll see. You'll see once it's out. Um, but you see this? So Here's what I would not like to do. Try not to keep everything like this at the same line, right? That's something that also happens. It could be fun. Like it could be fun if the sail would go above the, the mountains, if it was a lower angle and the sun would be behind it. But I like to move things a bit. So I would probably put the sun either like off more to the side, maybe somewhere around here to kind of balance it out. It actually looks really good in the preview. I like it like here on the right. I like the way it looks. Or maybe I would try to, again, avoid that same distance thing. So I'd probably do it a little more off to the side or something like that. Just something to break off the pattern, you know? Um, maybe even in the middle, you know? This looks good. This looks really nice. So I'd probably place it somewhere around here. Just the one thing I don't like as much is everything lining up. Try and avoid that. It's just not very common for it to happen in real life. Again, best practices... Do whatever feels right for you. Maybe you want to create a sense of cringe. Maybe you want to create a sense of instability. Maybe you want things to line up extra, right? And you can balance it out with other elements. So like if you do line things up, maybe you can balance that out with a very weird composition that's a little unusual, right? And then look at this. This is really nice. And really try to play around with ideas. Think of how cool this would be as a huge panoramic painting. And the feel that it gets, that the sea is almost like a path that stretches far and wide over the horizon. And this boat is going through a journey, right? This ship or whatever it is. Um, you see that, that these things really make a difference in how we perceive the scene and the feeling that it gives us. And all I can do is share with you my process and kind of the way it makes me feel. And then you get to decide those decisions based on, you know, whatever you want to convey. But the one thing I would try and avoid is all of these awkward overlaps that really feel uncomfortable, you know? Uh, Lynn asks, wouldn't it be better with the cell not being right on the mountain edge line? Yes, but it's not too, it's not directly on it. It's almost there, you are right. And I would probably make it a little lower hanging, but just a little. This actually doesn't bother me as much here because there is a bit of a gap. See? Uh, now, yeah, when you look at the bigger scene and you crop it less, I guess in the grand scheme of things, it is close. But you know what? I never even interpreted it this way. I, I kind of would paint it lower without even thinking about it. It's a good point. It's a good point. Definitely a valid point. Um, I love this. Maybe a little more. Just a little more of this. See? This looks so good. This, this is really cool. I would love to paint it this way. Uh, Deep Krishan, how are you doing? How should one approach third uh, third points to composition? So here's my take on it. Again, try and, and test out. Don't go with a formula like, okay, I'm going to place everything in the thirds. Try and look at different ways and ask yourself, how do I, how do I feel about this? How do I feel about that? You know, um, would I maybe want to show like a, 
more of this kind of a thing of a depth you know uh this i don't like i don't know why it feels a little tacky and the sun doesn't help at all in this composition in this composition the sun doesn't work for me that well probably get rid of it um but yeah this could work too you know the crop version looks more interesting and you know that's kind of the goal to make it look more interesting and more paintable even because when you have a focal point that's tiny and it's in the middle somewhere it's getting lost which is why i really recommend closing in on it right sebastian i can relate to the third rule being a general way of balancing things and being a bit off is not a problem and often actually makes it better and more natural yep yep i agree good morning from ctl puperoni hi thank you for being here uh pierre says i know a lot of people put seagulls in such seascapes i find it cringeworthy your thoughts uh, it would depend on how you put them in and the, the seascape itself. Um, I think that for if you put them with the right amount of gray, for, for example, here it's not gray, but, you know, muted color, like this brown here, it could work like with, a, with this same color, not with black, because the black will kind of kill off that. But, you know, I don't, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> it's usually not necessary, you know. Seagulls are nice when you do want to add some motion. The the thing is here, you have so much motion in the in the sea. You see all of this, all of these patterns really provide all the motion you need. Um, so really no need to. So yeah, I would say sometimes I may cringe too if it's if it's really unnecessary. But look at all this motion here. It leads us all the way to the boat, you know. So yeah uh hey gina how are you uh good morning you're such an awesome artist thank you for sharing yeah Dev, it's my pleasure i have so much fun and thank you so much almost 80 people thank you Dwayne. if anyone can if everyone who's here can drop a like i'm gonna refresh there better be more likes okay yeah we need to work on that 42 is not enough so <laughs> make sure you drop a like if you can and let us move on to the next one i'm gonna close these as we um no i'm gonna leave them open it's okay for now so here we have something I love, a cityscape, of course. And again, when you look at photos taken by photographers, usually they do a very good job. And so you could paint it like it is, right? But let's think for a second here. What's the essence of what this scene conveys? What does it show? Now, I see a few things here, and this is probably going to be new information for many. So here's the thing. I see probably three things here that could be used as a big idea. And I let those lead me. Now, you can't guess because it's very personal. But here are the three things I see. Number one, city life. So that's anything that has to do with the lower right area. Now, it doesn't mean you crop it this way. But when you look at these rooftops and these dormers and the cars even... People live here, and I love that to provide that kind of a feeling of interest and people actually live here. And if you'd have like a rooftop with people, that would have been even cooler in a way. So that's one. Number two is architecture. So to me, this, this area right here really speaks about that. Okay, and by the way, yeah, this is too much, again, too close for comfort. I'd rather if it would be here, right? But in any case... This here, this dome, this structure is just beautiful. So that's another idea you can play with. And the last one, which is my favorite, so I saved it for last, is just the idea of depth and visual elements, which is this. Did you notice just how much depth there is in this painting? Can you tell how much depth there is here? Because if you look at this, background layer and you look at the color here it's just this muted blue it's probably even lighter probably went on the bit of a dark side you see it's kind of in the middle there and look at how different it is from this green these are the same types of trees probably you know i, I i'm willing to bet that this is the same type of tree and this is something i always tell people look at the difference it's very common for beginners to paint this with the same green that they see here and it's usually not the most flattering green so it'll be something like a very unnatural 
green. It's way too bright for where it's placed. I'm exaggerating a bit, but you get the point. So aerial perspective plays a big role. And when I think of what do I want to convey when I look at this scene, I love that aspect of depth. So what I may do is hone in on that, get rid of the right side that's not as interesting, and go with maybe something like this that allows me to place, and again, I place the tower around a third because that's what I like. But look at this. We can now contrast the tower with this beautiful background and tell the story of how this city recedes into the background. And you get everything here. You get architecture, this thing. You get the beautiful bluish background. You get some foliage in the city right here too. Let me start marking things for you, right? Right here, nice nice foliage. But you also get one thing that I like a lot, and that is actual details. You can actually paint this rooftop and leave these beautiful highlights on the dormers that you can barely see because my brush is really thick. Um, you can show all of these beautiful details and still show the cityscape receding. And look at how fun of a wash this is going to be to start here with the sky with a very pale blue, moving down all the way to this darker pale blue, and then starting to merge with orange all the way down to the bottom, right? That's such a beautiful wash. And to me, the stories I like to tell the most are that kind of a combination of a cityscape and the natural visual characteristics of depth right and if you look at it everything works here almost we don't have any awkward overlaps around the edges right i don't see anything like this is not a corner if you go down here like you don't have to be ex like dogmatic about it it's okay if this is close to the corner it still feels very natural to me right and i actually really like details in the foreground in the corner that's something i personally like not everyone likes it but i would love to show this and honestly, I'd probably paint it exactly like this. Now, if you're a beginner and you're having a hard time to simplify the reference photo and to paint it properly, what happens? And I'll ask you, you can answer this question. What happens when you look at this thing right here? It's a lot. It's a lot. This is a lot to work with. There's a lot of things that happen here. This depth, yes, in the corner, but then you have this foliage and you have to render all of these edges, get it to paint negatively around the rooftops, make that orange brighter, right? Paint around this dome thing. Zooming in and cropping just makes it a whole more suitable for a painting. This is much more manageable. With this, you can deal with one even wash for an underpainting, then adding a few details if you want to with a bit of a darker mid value and finally the shadows. This is much more manageable to me, right? And that's the great advantage of cropping, cropping references, you know. And I would say one more thing. When I look at this thing, again, anything can be painted. And you can play around with focal points by details and contrast and colors and a lot of means, right? But when I look at this, I'm like, I like this area here. And I love this tower. And I love this dome. And I love these rooftops in the foreground. And then you start getting lost in details, right? So ideally, what you'll be able to do is really not only by using skills, choose and tell the viewer what to look on, the, the way you crop the reference photo will already dictate to you, the painter, what you're going to focus on. Makes it much easier, I think. Uh, so yeah, let me know your thoughts and then we'll move on to the next one real soon. Uh, Gina, I always like my artists who share their art with us. Yeah, I love sharing my art. It's it's like I do this in a selfish way too. It makes it helps it sell. It helps me sell the courses. Uh, it's super great that I'm able to do that. I don't understand anyone who doesn't really, you know, if you want to make a living off it, you kind of have to share your art, I guess. Um, thank you so much for encouraging people. Yeah, uh, Marjorie, my aunt had a painting that didn't sell for almost ten shows. She brought it. Uh, to the studio, edit a cardinal, and it sold next door. That's funny. <clears throat> I wonder if it's because of that or just pure luck, you know? That's interesting. Uh, Kelly Santos, I'm loving these examples. Also to photography, greetings from Brazil. Thank you so much. 
Seagulls are more natural if you paint a harbor or close up boats to add life to the scene, natural habitat, and where they hang out. Yeah, it I get what you're saying. It could feel a bit tacky if it's just the sea and seagulls. Yeah. Uh thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, Lynn. Um Dwayne, when you crop the image, it looks way more interesting, but references like these tend to have some much details I get lost. Yeah, exactly. So this is the thing. This is why I love doing this. Because when you look, not this, <laughs> when I, why I love doing this kind of a thing. Because when you go this narrow, at least, I can get, even get rid of some of this guy. At least you know, okay, I'm going to really put a lot of hard work in getting the tower right. Because that's like the main thing here. It, cuts through the distance it looks great so at least you know you'll focus on that when you look at the whole thing you have a bazillion things to focus on so at least it helps you a bit now the way i like to handle this i know this feeling being overwhelmed i like to treat it in layers again so the first layer i'm not worried at all i'm just going to place colors here and there and all i'm trying to set up is the temperature so think about it this way the first wash to me is if i do a blur filter i'm going to blur this whole thing something like that and then i'm gonna reduce the opacity to me that's a first layer let me add like a background that's white so that it will mimic a paper i never i've never done this kind of a demo before but like that's a first wash to me blue orange done after that i'll start adding in the shadows and the details and everything but i'll take it step by step so i'm not worried first then when it's time to put in the shadows i'll start thinking okay what are the shapes that i want to paint and then i'll start and it's not easy i get it it's not easy to do but i'll start you see putting in different shapes and i already established the orange in the previous wash right so all i have to really do is put the shadow over the previous wash where i see them and skip the areas i want to leave light see um, but I get it. I get getting lost in the details. This is actually a really nice scene. I may paint it like this if people are interested. It's a very common thing. At least here you know, okay, I'm really going to focus on the tower. And you could start with the tower if you want to. No one forces you to do an initial wash and all of that. You can just start by painting the tower. You know, Diane says, I get lost in details too. I tend to want to paint every detail. Yep, yep. There's There's a time and place for painting the details. It's not in the beginning. It's not when you set up your big shapes. It's afterwards when you start working on on when it's when it looks done from afar. That's when it's time to put the details. That's the best way I can describe it. Funny enough, uh, Pierre, take your point, Sebastian. But tiny black squiggly lines seems like a couple. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, Okie doke, bird. <laughs> I thought I'd do a variety of different photos and kind of treat it the way it is. So I actually really like it. The one thing I would probably do here is just narrow it down like that. I don't know why. I don't really like that the bird is that takes this size. I would focus in more on the bird. Now, here's something cool. So you have all of these bars here, right? Please try and avoid these kinds of things, right? Because then this thing doesn't play a role, in my opinion. It feels, again, it feels a little claustrophobic. So I would work with the in between the bars. Okay, one thing to pay attention to. Let's let's build like the worst composition that I would hate the most, okay? <laughs> Let me show you something like this. This is so annoying just to look at. There we go. That's the way I would <laughs> never do it. And again, you know, you could do this. There's no reason to, but you could do this if you want to can make the viewer uncomfortable, you know? It's okay. Well, like, this is super off balance, right? But you could argue that your subject is the cast shadow right here. That, that this, what you want people to see is not the bird even, but these nice little stretching shadows, you know? Let's try something fun here. Let's zoom in on the, on the bird, like, significantly. Let's try and make this into something else. Let's try changing it completely. To a different subject. So let's say we're going to paint just the bird's legs or something like that. So I would do it this way. I'm looking at this shadow here to the right. See, I don't want to overlap it with the edge. So I'm either going here or I'm going here. 
but I think I'll go here. And then, what role does this bar play? See, this looks nicer to me. This opens up this light shape. Look at this now, this triangle. And look at this. This feels much more fun. And then I'd close this off maybe a bit. There has to be a trade-off because this is a bit of an unusual format. It's a bit too stretchy. So I could just add this if I want to. Open this up a bit more. And you know, it may look funny to you, but this is a really good subject in my opinion. Turn this black and white. I like it, very clear shapes. Look at how dark the yellow becomes when I do this because it's a very saturated yellow. If I go adjustments, and this is a bit off topic, but I'll go with brightness and then I'll remove the saturation. It looks a little lighter. I don't, I'm not sure what the science behind it is. I can show you a comparison of the two and you'll you'll have a, a you'll get a kick out of it. So I'm going to duplicate my layer. With one layer I'm going to do image adjustments hue saturation. And I'm going to reduce the saturation meaning turning it black and white. Okay? With the other one I'm going to do what I just showed you, image adjustments vibrance and I'm going to lower the saturation on the vibrance menu. And look at the difference between the two. Same thing, we removed all colors. So it's different interpretations of Photoshop. Again, not sure what the science is. I'm going with this one. I like it better, probably probably in the middle. So I'd probably go with something like that. See, now this is a great subject because there's simple shapes. You see, this is, it's so funny. I could, I could paint just about anything and have fun, you know, even animals. <laughs> you have this beautiful just shadow. And the highlights, look at this beautiful, the way you skip those highlights. It's just so fun. The highlights you can leave here on the on the legs, the little paws. It's not paws, it's just legs. I don't know what the official thing for it is, but all of these negative shapes, they're beautiful. This is such a good subject, you know? Just technically speaking, you could hate it, but like this is great. This is a great thing to paint, you know. By the way, you can find links to all of the photos I'm showing you in the description box, even by the order we're going through them. So just know that. So this is perfect. It's a completely different scene. And it's more manageable. Again, compared to this thing, where you have so much to deal with, you have this yellow that is super duper strong. And even if you don't turn it black and white, this very bizarre crop just looks good, you know? Look at this nice little... You know, combination of warms, cools, you can do so much with it, right? Uh, so just a thought. But yeah, um, Dwayne, I would start by doing a sketch in pencil, the paints, to paint the roof and then building and then shadow and then detail. Yeah, I could demo this if, if you're interested. I love painting birds. They're such amazing subjects to paint. I always center my bird paintings. Yeah, I see in the profile pic. And I've seen a video of yours, a couple of them actually. Um, with the birds. Sebastian, I use phone, the phone to do what you're showing in this session when I'm outside. Yeah, that really helps. It's so hard. So hard to see the crop when you're doing planner. So hard. Hey, David, how are you doing? Thank you for being here. I hope everything is going well. Uh, Linda, edited comment. Yes, I love to watch you paint the cityscape with orange rooftops. Okay. Would consider it for sure. Chicken feet. <laughs> Making me hungry. Yeah. It doesn't make me as hungry. But yeah, <laughs> okay, flowers. I actually love this. I think I would probably keep it the way it is. But let's say, so this has great potential to be a, um, again, a portrait orientation. Now, one thing you could do is probably just rotate it. So you could go edit. Where's my thing? Oh, losing it. Image, image rotation. Let's do a 90 counter counterclockwise do I need? Yeah, counter. So you could just paint it like this and it looks really good, right? You don't even have to crop sometimes. Sometimes rotation helps. Or you could go the other way around, um, image rotation clockwise like this, looks great too. Or you could cut it. So let's think about it for a second. And I love that some parts are blurry, right? Now, obviously if you want the flowers to be the focal point, Probably going with something. This is feels a little awkward because of all of these little pollens, I guess. And that little fly, I didn't even notice that it was here. This little insect. Um, so I would probably hmm, go like this even. 
If I had to, I would do something like this more likely. That's a nice little crop. This is a beautiful, like if you paint it accurately and you really follow what you see, this is a beautiful painting too. And you made it simple because all of these details here are so blurry. I'd probably not even bother, you know? I'd probably not even bother. This would be a nightmare to paint. It is possible. Again, turning things black and white would make it the easiest to see. So let me just see what this looks like. Just out of curiosity, you know? See, this is going to be so hard to paint. So sometimes cropping is a means to just make it easier to paint. So bye-bye pollens. Bye-bye things. I'm just going to include a flower. This I actually really like. It's a shame we can't really use both. Like these closed off flowers in the in the background that that looks really nice but it would just merge and become a part of that abstract you know area around it um but yeah you just mentioned going to black and white yep yep it does uh white reza hello a bit late today thank you for being here richard hey how are you doing thank you so much to everyone who's here much appreciated i'm very happy to have you here um okay Here's an interesting one. If you try and paint, if I would try to paint it like this, I'd lose my mind. These blurry elements are just, they're not, they're not meant to be painted. It's a cool gimmicky photo. It's not even a bad photo. I just would never paint it this way. When I look at this, it's a nightmare. So what can we play off of here? The buildings. The person you could in theory, but he's so low down there. I don't think you can bring much out of it. But we have two very clear elements here that, that I would play around with. So one of them is the buildings, of course. So let me show you. And that's a very vertical element. And then we have the bridge. And that's a very horizontal element. So we get to choose because it's a really it has potential. So let's try it out. So if I were to get rid of all of these edges that are really not helping me out, I could either focus again my, my composition around the bridge and maybe even go with something like this. Now, there are a few subtleties here, and this annoys me, right? But we'll, we'll ignore it. We'll pretend it doesn't exist for the sake of this kind of demo. Here's the thing, the nuance here. I want to make sure that this building isn't like kissing the edge again of the scene. And this feels a little, again, claustrophobic because you see the sky only through the buildings. So I do like to show some edges for buildings. Now, when you do it this way, you have no idea if the building continues or it doesn't continue. So you could play around with it and it will look okay, the building on the right. Correct? Now, you could go like this. Probably, see, this is, this is stuck here. I don't like that. So I'd probably do it this way. And then I'm revolving around the bridge. Now, just to, to be honest with you, I really dislike this photo for a painting. I would never paint this. But just talking composition, this feels decent. If you want to play around with the idea of horizontal. Now, if you want to play around with the idea of vertical, you actually are going to have an easier time because then you can really get rid of all of this annoying foliage. And I would actually keep the person in. I wish they were a little like higher up, but it could work. And I'd probably find it somewhere around here, probably. Here's the problem with this and why I would not paint it. There isn't depth. There's nothing to, to create a sense of depth. And plus this lower, this really annoys me, this edge, bottom right corner. As you can see, I don't like this for painting at all, but just in theory, you know? There isn't enough depth here. You'd really have to play around with this to create interest. So what you'd have to do essentially is, let's say, take these buildings, make it even lighter. So go a little, look at how neutral these grays are. This is really neutral. Go like very light, maybe on the more bluish side, like this, and make it like a, unidentifiable blob <laughs> just to get the bridge to appear you know of course i'm just you know i'm playing around here but just saying like there isn't enough to pull us into the photo and and i don't know or you could darken the bridge significantly 
not my type of photo, but you know, if we strengthen, that's going to be very dark, but let's say in theory, see, maybe you leave a few highlights between them. I don't like it when there's just a bunch of stuff in the background, nothing close to tie it in. You know, you could say the birds, the person, but yeah, not feeling this one, but in terms of composition, that's how I would cut it. If I have to, if I absolutely have to seagull. Okay, I see a lot of pictures like this. This is a good picture. I see a lot of pictures that are the same, but imagine this is where the seagull is, right? Now, I don't have a problem with it being in the center. And of course, this is all theoretical, right? Because this one is good. But let's try and kind of simulate that. So, so I see a lot of photos that kind of look like this, you know? Look, we're doing nice Photoshop work. Isn't that fun? Uh, so let's say I grab this. Let's get rid of the seagull here in the background, blah, blah, blah. So so I see quite a lot of reference. It's so funny that my Photoshop skills are decent, I have to say. Oops, that's not the layer I wanted to move. I'm putting way too much effort to show you something very insignificant, but oh, well, that's fun. Now, why wouldn't it move. So let's see what I'm looking at here. Okay. Move this here. Place these two. There we go. So I see a lot of these. And then it feels like, you know, the focal point is tiny and it's in the middle. That happens quite a bit. Now here where I took professional pictures from Pixabay, it's professional photographers. You really have to close in on those. And that's what the person who took this picture essentially did for us. They zoomed in, they cropped out what's unnecessary. This is really the perfect reference photo. Now, I still feel like I'd much rather put more focus on the seagull. So I am zooming in on it. And I am doing this, most likely. Because I want to be able to see more of its details. I'm still keeping it off to the side, right? But I'm really zooming in on it. Now, one thing you want to consider avoiding is something like this. Let me do this kind of a thing. Very often when there is this incongruency between the direction of movement and how where you place the seagull, that can look a little strange, right? Because it's flying obviously to the, to the right, to this direction. What you see is this direction, right? But then we close it off like a wall in front of it. So that's something that's kind of a breast practice, you know, keep an open area where the movement goes in that direction, the vector of movement, something to have in mind, right? Now, you could play around with the top to bottom. So, right, you could add a bit more uh, to the bottom. Come on, come on. You could add a bit more to the bottom or to the top. I could just probably... I could just grab the photo and move it, right? I'm, I'm giving myself a hard time. I could just do this or that, right? I actually like it when the seagull is higher rather than lower, but it really is a matter of personal taste. This feels a little almost condescending to me. Like I'm the photographer, you're the animal. I'm filming, taking a picture from higher up, whereas this gives me a sense of majestic nature, right? So it's all these small nuances that you want to play around with, see how they make you feel, you know? Uh, so, yeah, this is this photo is perfect. I would just, you know, really get close, really up close on the seagull and actually see it from up close. Um, thank you so much, Pierre. Thank you, everyone, who encouraged uh, the likes. I really appreciate it. Um, Gina, I'm painting a girl's face from imagination. It's so fun to play in my watercolor journal. That's cool. That's so hard to do, you know. Sebastian, does it look like cherry or maybe almond flowers? Yeah, the previous ones. Or jasmine, maybe. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm really bad at this. Uh, Mother Nature has given us artists so much to work with. Yep, yep. And by not trying to compete with it, you can create beautiful stuff. Hey, Henny, welcome aboard. Random question alert, Leron. How do you <laughs> make your cold coffee? I, we have a coffee maker with um, coffee beans. Um, we got it for a really good price. It was pure luck. Uh, so we have beans. We hit the brew button uh, and it comes. It's not capsules. It's actual beans and it grinds them. I just do that. I add almond milk. The milk that we drink is 
almond milk, but sugarless. No not added sugar, sugarless. There's no sugar in that milk. Um, and usually I like to actually add like a whipping cream or something like that. To give it some more fat. Because sometimes that's my breakfast. So yeah. Um, dark and everything put contrazer from behind a building and make uh, the river very bright. Yeah, that's that's what I, that's what most people would do. To me, it's very hard, White Reza. With my experience, with everything, it's still, and you're referring, of course, to this one. It's really hard for me to do that too. Like I'm experienced and it's very hard for me to pull off something that looks interesting from that. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, it's okay if it's hard. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say, you know. But it is a possibility. That's what you would do. Yes, acceptable seagull. <laughs> Sebastian, I prefer cormorant to seagull. Longer neck to black and white contrast. Yeah, cormorants are beautiful. It's a beautiful bird. Okie doke, next stop, street. I don't even remember saving this one. And, and yeah, so there's not a lot here. The One of the obvious things you want to avoid is, again, the these, especially with scenes that are so diagonal, because what you get here is, unlike the previous uh, building scene, where you get a lot of, and by the way, this is the, this is the essence of it. Here, again, it's flat. You don't have any diagonals, almost. This is the only diagonal, and it's off to the corner, like it's in punishment or something. Uh, wait a second, like here, make the brush smaller. So you see this thing, right? Everything is either horizontal or vertical. Here you get the other way around. Everything is kind of diagonal, right? All of these diagonals of perspective. That's my weakest angle in pencil to up to the left, slight angle. Um, so look at even this is diagonals. Even this is diagonals now i really dislike the colors of the photo but i like the composition so one thing you want to avoid with these and i actually see this a lot is again that whole edge idea i see so many people who like it's almost like they try to paint like this where all the corners line up perfectly with the edges, I really don't like that. That's very, I don't know, void feeling. So with that, I like the original composition in that regard. I would probably not change much here. Here's what I would consider changing. See, this thing here feels a little awkward. So I'd either bring it in, meaning I'm going to show more, Either show more of like something like this, where you can actually see where this leads, or I'll get rid of it altogether, right? Either I put it, I bring it into the photo, or because cropping is also, you know, making it stretch larger around, you know, or I would just get rid of it. Honestly, I may go with something like this, you know, get rid of some of the lower section because it's just doesn't play that big of a role for me and focus more on the sky. And the, yeah, I made it more paintable for myself. Now I figure it out. I really dislike all of this emptiness. But once I focus more on the sky, I have something to play with, you know. Trying to figure out what would be like a really good way to crop it. I may just keep it still like this, but just not paint this section. So essentially for me, the painting is going to end like that. See, I just won't have that thing here, which is a, a relatively simple thing to do because all you're doing in essence is stretching that uh, rooftop. I could probably edit this too. You know, you're just stretching this rooftop um, and basically continuing with sky over here. Right. Yeah, that's not working. <laughs> like this, you know? Something like this. Maybe it's too empty. I don't know. But this doesn't play too big of a role here for me to keep it, you know? Um, so, yeah, my thoughts on this one. Not the most interesting necessarily, but yeah. Tattoo Tank. Sorry, I'm watching and listening. I'm painting a barn from uh, my car as my daughter is taking her horse riding lesson. Oh, that's cool. That's fun. Yeah, definitely. So, I'm happy to, uh, to provide company as you do that. Um, definitely no need to apologize. Okay. 
So this is, again, another, and I'm, I try to really challenge myself to show reference photos I would not personally paint because I want to show something that fits everyone. So this is the classic example of, like, the focal point is dead in the center, right? To me, it's just a matter of make a decision. Are you going to show the space to the right, to the left, but make some kind of a decision and really close in. on the focal point so either like this or like that something this is this works this is okay to me this is not too bad of an overlap but like like i'm showing something i'm showing a bit more of the space to the left of the feet which is good you could do this too um you tell a different story right feels like almost maybe she's falling or maybe you know you show something else but to me that would be ideal that would be far better than this and i see a lot of people this and i see a lot of people paint like this i don't like it i find that it ends up looking a bit off now again if you do perfect execution you know let me test the mic something seems a little weird let me see here audio yeah okay we're good <clears throat> if you're doing a perfect execution you paint this perfectly of course yeah of course it would work right but i want to you know maximize the the scene now Let's say I'm going to keep it um, uh, horizontal, which would probably work better in this case. I would do something like this, right? Or you could, again, go like that. You could put it in the middle. I would say you could put it in the center, but maybe bring it up or down just to not up. You see, then you have the big empty space. I really dislike that. Something like this. Again, these aren't rules. This is kind of you know me playing around with it. I really like the way the shape of the feet complements the edge of paper here. See, it kind of meets it almost. Whereas if you go that route, there's something a bit combative to me. Like, see, it points to the edge of paper. All right, so a couple of things to have in mind there. Thank you, Dwayne. Oh, or is it for Ted to tank? Probably that's more awesome than what I'm doing right now. But yeah, uh, let's move on to number 10. Okay, interesting. I didn't even remember bringing this one in. Yeah. So one thing that's bugging me a little, and again, if I were to draw this, I'd probably, let me show you what I would draw, actually. It's funny, there's so much empty space here, I can just literally show you on this. So let's say this is my scene here. I'm going to fill this up with white paint. So the way I would, the way I think about it, let's say if I wouldn't crop it, I'd actually just draw it differently. And let me show you how. So what I would do is give a little more presence to this because it's an element, it's a depth generating element because there, there's this line that goes here into the scene so what i would do is give it a bit more presence by bringing it more in so i won't put it in the edge right here i'll bring it a little more in and then we'll have that other beautiful building like that and i'd probably minimize this shape maybe like this i'd cut all of this right side and have it more simple Maybe not the same height, maybe a little more like this, maybe a little more like that. But I would give even more, probably, even more presence to this section right here. Because I like it, and here it doesn't get enough, you know? And it's this angle that, that the windows look so cool in it. Like, let me show you. The, the difference is staggering. So in front of us, we have these windows that are beautiful but they're we're looking at them head on right so it's just that but these windows at an angle are some of what i enjoy the most let me show you why because you can see the inside of the window and that's really fun so you can see the top and you can see this and then the shadow it creates is so beautiful and i want to show these kinds of things right and here, it's more about these, you know, huge pillars. 
and you only get a bit of windows here. So I would almost make this entire scene more about this thing right here. See, that's way more inviting to me. That looks much better. That looks much better. And then my focal point, this can help me, this here, right, can help lead me to this spot, which is really cool, high contrast with the sky and the dark rooftop. That looks really, really good, you know? But compare it to the original. It feels out of balance. And how are you going to paint all of these pillars? It's just so repetitive and meh, you know? Again, this is my personal taste. I love these kinds of corners taken by buildings. I love that. So I would focus on that. Again, if you like this kind of a thing, go for that. But to me, this left side is so underutilized, right? This, you could even go like that, right? But but I, I kind of like it this way, the way I showed earlier. This feels good. This feels balanced. I don't know. My thoughts. Again, I have to... I would put a disclaimer up on everything. But I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on this one. This is great. It's black and white. It's relatively, you know, there's a lot of complexity here. I'm not going to lie. This isn't necessarily the easiest to paint, but it is still quite accessible. I totally see myself putting a th thin wash for all of the buildings together. Maybe a bit of wet and wet. Maybe skipping and waiting for the next stage, you know. Something like that. Dwayne says, I really dislike painting black and white. It never turns out as I want it to. That's very interesting, you know, because I never had that. And I wonder why that happens. Uh, if you can, if you, if you thought about it, I, I'm curious to hear, like, what doesn't look right to you, you know? Uh, what doesn't turn out the way you want? What would, is it the values that are off or is it boring to you? Like, I'm curious to hear because I love black and white. Um, okay, 11. Cat. Another one of those, here's my focal point. It's buried somewhere there in the distance. So, yeah, same kind of a thing. Get rid of this grass. It's moving clearly. You know, we see more of its right side. So it's moving and it's tilted a bit to the left. So I'd show more of the left side. That's how I would do it. You know, something like this feels good to me. Let's think, would I put it like more to the side? Maybe, maybe I would, maybe I'd, I'd even, honestly, I could put it in the center, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but then you, you want to break the balance in a different way if you can. So what do I mean by that? Put the cat in the center. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe the horizon line, avoid the center. So don't go fully. Yeah, I guess you can't because you put the cat in the center. And then what I would do is actually take this chunk of sky and set it a bit more to the side just to bring in some asymmetry here i would play around with the grass blades which are incredibly tough to paint but i would show some of them a bit more so for example this side that is you know feels a little i would make them taller maybe in one side make them taller and then the other side they can lay lower and that way you at least break off that kind of an, an evenness in everything, even if you place the cat in the dead center. What you can also do is tilt. Now, this is, again, a completely different feel, but it's definitely going to break the, you know what, not as much. Not as much. Maybe the other side, yeah, something like this. You see, at least it makes the grass pattern a bit more interesting, a bit diagonal. This is really nice, actually. This could be, like, I would never paint it just because it's super hard with all of these different you know out of focus shapes very tough possible you could abstract all of this background of course you can treat this entire thing as a wet and wet one big shape and then you kind of have to deal with the grass that's not easy but it is possible even the edges of the cat are going to blend into this background um could be a cool painting that diagonal thing that rotation really works i would keep it like that you know monica welcome aboard uh thank you for being here let's do uh so we have two more two more to go i know this has been more of a monologue and less of a dialogue but yeah here something happens that i really really dislike this um i see a lot of people painting this again this way where it's almost like and i can i know many of you can relate to this you don't know exactly what to include in a scene so you end up just kind of sticking elements in it. So let's say you paint the sky and the horizon line, 
and the, and the the little boat and then you're like <clears throat> what am i going to put here so you end up putting a bit of a horizon here a bit of a horizon there and you know maybe a bit of something in the back but this this thing here this thing creeping to the sides a bit of it here a bit of it there like the only thing that could be worse than this is if i go even more zoomed in if i go something like that like to me that's even worse just you know timidly adding a bit and i used to do that a lot a lot and tell me if you can write i'm sure you can a bit of this here a bit of that there and you kind of hope that it connects you got to be more deliberate you have to be more deliberate make a decision i would honestly paint it like this i think see that's more interesting at least i'm really getting to show something something you know it's the shore and some rocks i'll actually try and paint them in the buildings in the background in the boat in the boat right this is in uh i believe that's in egypt <clears throat> not sure oh it actually says follow i'm not sure where that is actually but yeah yeah i had a feeling uh, this photo is so cool you know i think that's how that's the weather the weather was weird i knew that as soon as i hit the levels it's gonna completely change it uh, but I think it's, yeah, that's how I would do it. Or, you know, you could go the other way around and do something like this, but like be a little more deliberate instead of like adding a bit here, a bit there, you know, this, this timid way of adding details like as an afterthought. These aren't details that are an afterthought. This is an inherent part of the painting that you planned in advance. So you knew that you're going to paint this shoreline and you paint it. You actually put it in properly, okay? Now, look at how well it complements the shape of the boat. That is really, really beautiful. And with that horizon line at the back, just beautiful. Now, funny enough, the first crop I went to was actually the right side, which is a little unexpected for a specific reason, right? So, here's the thing. I went first to this and the, the boat is moving to the left. So again, it's closing in on it. The reason I went for that is because it's closer to that side of the shore. So I can show them a bit better. But you could work with that. Even this is better than the original that is, you know. And of course, again, no, no, no hard feelings toward any photographers. They aren't thinking, oh, someone's going to paint this, right? You know, they're just doing their job. It's a beautiful picture. But again, this creeping from the sides you know creeping from the sides yeah you gotta be more deliberate than that you know, don't let the painting manage you you decide how to paint it you know so yeah you say it must be uh, egypt let me check where that is feluca 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 um greek um no wait 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 hmm because I remember I saw, I, I think I even saw Egypt mentioned there. So this is photo 12. Now we're just going to satisfy our curiosity. Photo number 12. And we're really close to the last one. And then, you know, feel free to ask any questions you may have. So picture 12. Yeah, it's denial. It's, it actually says it's denial. So it's indeed Egypt. Good catch. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, tilting was a great option. Indeed, a cute kitty. Uh, peace late today here, but hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Absolutely digging this tutorial. So many points I struggle with that I couldn't name before. Yep. Yep. That's just... And you know what? This isn't too difficult of a skill because it's more about just trying to cut it the way you want. And you can do this physically, right? With two uh, L bars or whatever you want to call it. That boat itself must be Egypt, yes. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, we read that one, too. Uh, so let's move on to the final one. And this is another seagull. Okay, oh, two more seagulls. Yeah. So let's look at what we've got here. This composition is lovely. And uh, let me tell you why. Yeah, you can guess, but the flow, the gesture of the seagulls here is just really, really nice. Did I put that dot here? I put it, right? I love how it's like this... Yeah, that was really bad. Like this and like that. That looks so good. The, the person cropping this did a fantastic job. So 
not only do they show two different curvatures, they're also doing them out of balance. So it's not like this. It's like this. So they complement each other, but they're also asymmetrical, which is really, really cool. So this is a photo, honestly, to be painted as it is. The one thing I probably, and, and I now remember why I put this photo here, because sometimes it is, it's minor changes. So what I would probably do is just remove a bit from the top or a bit from the bottom, and that's okay to make these small changes that, that feel almost, you know, unnecessary, but it just kind of looks a little better to you. So to me, I prefer it without some of the bottom, right? And that's okay, right? You move it around, you shift it, and you just place it wherever you want. Uh, but yeah, that about wraps it up. You, you could go with something completely different. Let's see if we can get away with rotating this one. See, not too much. But if you would want to, let's say if you were willing to be a little courageous and say, okay, I'm going to actually crop out a part of the seagull. You could do it. To me, it looks a little strange, honestly, but you could do it. Mm, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do this. I like it the way it is. I'll just get rid of that like I did here. Just the bottom. Top puts it a little too symmetric. You know, this looks good too. You have to play around with it. To me, this looks even better. So it's even top to bottom, but it's just more landscape. This looks really cool. Probably would paint it this way if I had to choose. Hmm. Interesting. Didn't think about that too. That's a good option. And you see, I like this space here to the left. You don't have to close off on everything. I actually like it. You know what could be perfect if there was a bit more to the right and then you go real extreme? Something like this. That would work even better if you really want to be courageous. And I'm trying to paint more, you know, weird formats, as you've seen. I like that kind of a thing. So I wonder if the stamp tool is going to help me here or I'll have to use something else. Yeah, that's not going to work. Oh, there we go. Oh, another seagull appeared. <laughs> Photo editing is fun. But yeah, this looks good. This is really neat. And if you compare it to the original, it's much more interesting because you're playing with the shape of the wings. It's a bit more natural to me. Now that I look at it, maybe I would add a bit below. I'd bring that back. Like so. That looks interesting. That looks really interesting. Uh, but yeah, that about wraps up all the, all the photos. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. In the meantime, let's see what few messages that we got here. Um, thank, yeah, the crop version looks amazing. Thank you. Yep. Yep, I, I like it a lot. Uh, Gina, I live in a city and we have seagulls dumpster diving. Oh, man. Yeah, they're they're brave. They don't care. They hop down, they eat everything and then fly away. Uh, Sebastian, I also prefer the boat at the left instead of the right. Interesting. Yep, yep, yep. Less distance between the edge and... Yep. Good morning. Joined that kitty cropping. Good lesson. Makes me think. Where do you live, Liron? I'm in Tel Aviv, so we also have the port and the uh, seagulls. I don't see them here, like where I'm physically at, where I actually live, my house. Um, but we're close. We're close uh, to the beach, you know. <laughs> Pierre rats with the wings. Yeah, that's more bats, but definitely, yeah. So this is, I do see this as an essential skill, but a, a bit of an easier one to acquire. I think some parts of it are, you know, really getting the hang of the... Uh, I'm really slouching, but really getting the hang of the the best practices. And then once you get that, it's all about learning your taste. You know, once you learn your taste and the things you love and the way you love to convey stuff. So I'm really, really tired. Sorry for the super yawn. That's when things will really click for you. And that's how you can take even a photo you found online and really make it your own by cutting it differently. And you can create a completely new painting out of it. One more thing you can do, for example, with these seagulls is just to crop one of them out and paint the the you know the water as if the other seagull doesn't exist. That's another option for playing around with it. You know, you can do this. This looks cool too. 
you know there's a lot that can be done here a lot that you can do and i think it will really improve your work and i think at the level of inspiration too like i find it hard to paint from a photo that i don't like as much you know that i really dislike the crop i find it hard to paint from there's a strange noise from the living room i have no idea what it is the wind moves everything hope nothing fell there i'll check later um but yeah it will really make your work your own and create a signature for you you know i can tell by how people frame the painting by now because you will notice the different artists do this very differently if you look at someone like joseph bookvich then you look at someone like andy evenson they do things very very differently in how they crop their um their photos their their photos their paintings there are a lot of artists that do more like like this kind of a weird you know orientation extreme um landscape or extreme portrait um we looked at javid Tabtabai. he does that too like extreme panoramic scenes which are really beautiful you know i love that kind of a thing um so yeah yeah these are my thoughts uh let me know if you have any final questions and i think we can wrap it up for today not every live stream has to be two hours long i still have uh more work to do so we'll see well i have so much you know just so much work i'm trying to balance it out with creating content i feel like making more content you know i reduced the number of youtube videos a week and now i feel like doing more i feel like improving the existing one so i have a few cool ideas uh you know stay tuned there's it's gonna be interesting um you know there's so many things like i'm just trying to make things that are a little different from the usual watercolor content you know um just like i'm striving for my paintings to be you know a bit different from the norm and i'm still not there right i'm, I'm moving towards there why wanted to show both that's weird um I'm still not fully there. That's strange. Why would it do that? Anyway, I'm still not fully there, of course, but I'm trying to, you know, break the norm a bit at my pace. I'm actually working on a painting where I really will do this. Um, I'm trying to do the same with videos. We'll see how it goes. You know, I'm really not sure. Thank you so much, Sebastian. Thank you for being here. Um, and may the water control be with you all. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you, Pierre, for being here. Um, I live just north of Daniel Smith's company. I mean, Everett, where they're on say, Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you should you should go get a tour, you know. Go pay them a visit. Tell them you want to see how they make the paints. Film it, if possible. That will be interesting. Uh, Ted to Tank, what's your opinion on black outliners on watercolor? Like actual, you know, Sharpies or like markers? I hmm, I don't see them too much in use, you know? I'm not sure what to say. I'm really not sure. It's it's cool. It gives me a mixed media vibe. Um, it could work. could be really fun. But I don't know. Let me know if that's what you meant. Uh, I hope I'm interpreting it correctly. I think it could look really interesting, you know? Give it a bit more of a poppy, pop kind of look. Something to experiment with. Um, you can do this and then report to us how it turns out, you know? Uh, hey, Charnel, how are you doing? Hope everything is going well. Uh, you know, I, yeah, that's the door, that's the wind. Um, I know I missed a lot of messages uh, from you, I think, a couple too, and from many people, so sorry about that. I'm working so hard on the business side of things that I I really have to carve out time just for interactions and stuff, which I really enjoy. So it's a, it's just a time, you know, I have to go through, and then in, in a month or two, I'll balance the other way around, you know. Um, Daniel Smith is, yeah, it's expensive here too, by the way, if you're talking about them. Uh, Dwayne, thank you for the amazing live. Great information. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, so I think we can wrap it up. Oh, one thing I did want to mention. Um, let's let us let some more people into the Discord. Let me stop my screen share because we don't need it. Um, so, the the again, the way I got this idea for the video was because someone in the Discord, you know, shared a reference photo and i cropped it differently and i didn't realize it, it really improved it 
um, and then I was requested to do something like this. And I was like, yeah, well, let's do it. Uh, so I'm going to put a link if you're not in the Discord. And I know a lot of you are. But I'm going to put a join link. So feel free to join. It's going to be open for a couple of days. Um, uh, let's see here. Invite people. Yeah, okay. So this is going to be open for seven days. Um, I like to keep the Discord small because it, it really gives um, it really gives it a good kind of tight knit community feeling. So yeah, let's open it up for a few more. I posted a link uh, right here. Copy it <laughs> and feel free to join. If you're looking at this on a phone, I'm gonna try and put it in a comment. Um, so a Discord is like a forum, but with chat. So it's it's basically a, a chat with tons of rooms. So there are there's the general conversation room where you can just talk about whatever you want. There's the watercolor room, uh, and people share their art there. A lot of the people who are here are there on the Discord. It's called Liron's Art Universe, <laughs> um, and it's a good place to share your work, get some feedback from people, you know, just share cool stuff. Um, and it's a chat format. It's just a conversation. Um, so it's really fun. Give it a try. It will probably send you to download the app or whatever uh, on the computer if you want to give it a shot. Uh, we're going to open it up. Um, and I'm actually curious to see if anyone is going to join from this link. Um, oh, I see that Dwayne. Oh, Dwayne, you joined recently, actually. I didn't even remember that you. Yeah, because I, I don't follow the new members because it's just a feed. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying, I've been trying to be more active in the Discord in the last couple of days. Hopefully it was noticeable. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you so much, John. Uh, and thank you, Paul. Yeah, give it a try. Uh yeah, 34 sets of mission gold for oh yeah, interesting. Yeah, I need I still need to try mission gold. So in any case, yeah, if you want to continue the conversation, definitely feel free to. I'm going to wrap it up probably for today. Uh, Saturday's video is going to be uh, interesting. It's going to be kind of a repurposing of existing an existing process, but I think you'll really enjoy it. It's it's straight to the point, and it's a, it's a good video. I think it's something that more people need to see. Um, but I have a few really good original ideas for the next couple of weeks. So you'll see, you'll see a couple of really interesting YouTube videos. Um, probably most of them will take some time, though. Uh, to cook. Uh, but I do hope to do like a proper painting process um, next week. Maybe I'll do one on Tuesday. Uh, maybe I'll do one on Saturday too. We'll see. I want to do, uh, it's been a while since I did like a proper, you know, uh, process. Gina says, oh my gosh, I had no idea I wrote all these books. Yeah, you know, I should promote myself more. So this is a good opportunity. If you don't, if you didn't know, I have a couple of books on drawing. But honestly, the book I'm most excited about is the 100 Cars book. And that's going to be out soon. Let's see if I have the cars here. No, I put them already in the back. Um, you know what? Let me share with you. Oh, you know, I can just put it in Photoshop and share it there. So let me show you a montage I made. I shared it on Instagram. We'll do this quick segment, kind of five minutes, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, where did I put it? Yeah, it's here. Temporary content for posting. Recent cars. Let me show you. So these are from the last couple of days. I'm going to share my screen one second. Share screen window Photoshop. So there we go. Uh, so these are the cars from the last couple of days. Numbers uh, 86 to 89. So this one you probably have seen because it's been a while since I posted it. Uh, this one too. This one I really, really like. It's based on a photo I took. Uh, I believe it was in the Morocco airport, if I'm not mistaken, before we our flight took off back, back home. Or maybe it was when we... No, we landed too late for this flight. And this one I just finished today. Um, and I feel like, you know, one thing that really improved for me is color matching. I have no idea... Uh, and these, so this again, this is the one on the right PR I did today. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I did it. So, so yeah, for a week, that's not bad. Uh, I think, but this will be it for this week, probably. Maybe tomorrow I'll squeeze another one, or maybe Saturday. We'll see. But um, 
<coughs> I feel like my color matching really improved. Um, and yeah, thank you, Pierre. May, May told me that this is her favorite, by the way. Of all of all the challenge, she said this the airport one is her favorite. Uh, I like it a lot because there's a person there. It's a story. It's nice. Um, but yeah, my color matching skills have gone through leaps and bounds, I feel like. And I actually can attribute this to digital painting, believe it or not. And it's something I'm going to talk about in a, in a video. It's going to take a month at least to be out, I think. But you'll see. It's a, it's a very interesting thing. But I, I feel like I really managed to improve it lately. Um, so yeah, so these are the ones. This is the book I'm excited about. That's the upcoming project. Once I'm finished with all the 100 cars, again, I only have 11 left to go. I'll compile it into a beautiful picture book, a hardcover. Hopefully, will be a really high quality uh, so that you can basically get... Uh, hey, Jill, how are you? Thank you for being here. Uh, so you can basically get um, 100 of my of my paintings in a proper like book format that you can just browse at your own, you know, whatever. Uh, and there's, there's going to be um, uh, some text there that I'm going to combine of my thoughts and these processes and my artistic process and, you know, the, the crises that I had through, throughout all, making all of these paintings, some of the successes. There's going to be a lot of fun extra information I think you'll love. Um, yeah, Monica, you've seen those on Instagram. Yeah, and the one on the right I just today posted is a story. Uh, or wait, did I do a post? No, I posted as a story, I think. Um, this here, believe it or not, do you see this area right away? Let me make this smaller. This area right here, I painted over it, and then I used opaque paint to make it light. It was almost as dark as this, believe it or not. And then I used opaque paint to, to bring it back. So, you know, I'm I'm starting to become a little more kind of creative and free going with my process. Here I use the process that's a little more flowy, a little more wet and wet. It's going to be interesting. I think this book is going to be interesting. And hopefully a lot of people will find it kind of fun, um, maybe to even give as a gift to someone who's interested in art. It's going to appeal to hopefully more than just a watercolor audience. Um, and it's a project. It's fun. It's fun to paint a hundred of the same subject, but make it interesting and make it varied. You know, I'll try getting some different angles because I've do been doing a lot of this kind of a right here. Sorry, this kind of a thing. What you see here, um, trying to be more original. This one I try to be more original too. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the one I'm really excited about. There's also the courses. Um, there are links to everything in the description box. So if you want to learn from me how to paint and watercolor, how to paint realistically, how to paint loosely, um, you can check all of these out. How to how to how to draw from observation, how to sketch people. All of the courses, everything is in the description box below. So thank you so so much. Uh, 103 legged cats coming up. <laughs> That's going to be an amazing book. Travel across the country, find all the poor three-legged cats, find them a home, and then paint them on a very fancy pillow. Now, that's a project. Pierre, you should do this. I believe in you. <laughs> and on that note, uh, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so, so much for watching. Much, much love to you. If you watch this now, drop a like before you uh, leave if you haven't. And if you watch this after the fact, drop a like too. Um, I really appreciate those. Subscribe if you still aren't. What are you doing? Uh, and yeah, I will see you on Saturday's video. You will see me fresh. The process is going to be old, uh, but you're going to enjoy it, I think, a lot. So in any case, we'll wrap it up. Thank you so, so much. We'll talk to you again real, real soon.